Hola familia Franco and hi people that come across this video that are curious on how to make coricos or at least how I make coricos my grandmother's way. So my grandmother when her family originally all came from France but they settled in Sinaloa, Mexico. So she learned how to make coricos al estilo sinaloense and they are amazing. I just, out of all the cookies I've ever had, nothing quite takes me back to my childhood as these do. So they're really easy and the best part is that if you know people that have a gluten intolerance or you yourself have one, this is something that you can bring to any holiday party and they're going to be very well received. So instead of using all purpose flour, just make sure you pick up Maseca and you can find this at any market nowadays. I've even seen it I believe at Target and Walmart. Just check the flour section. If it's not there, it'll for sure be in their international aisle. But really easy to find. Um, if you can't find this particular brand, just look for corn flour, not cornmeal. Cornmeal, not the one that you use in cornbread, okay? Just corn flour. And uh, enough rambling. I do that a lot. I know I talk too much. It's part of being a science major and doing presentations for way too much of my academic career and career. But anyways, I'm shutting up now. Let's get started. Well, first you're going to add 200 grams of Crisco All Vegetable Shortening. And here's a quick tip, if you don't have a scale at home, purchase the one tub tin of Crisco All Vegetable Shortening and you're going to use slightly more than half of it. So half would be about right here. And you can see I've used a little bit more than half. That's roughly 200 grams. And then you're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda and start beating this until it gets really fluffy. So as you can see, the batter is looking really, really good. It's looking really creamy and puffy. And uh, next, we're going to add a cup and a quarter of sugar. Any kind will do, any kind that you use, whether white or brown. Um, I'm going to be using white sugar because that's what my grandmother used. But I'm going to be incorporating it into three different parts. So that's the first part, whisk it, and then we'll come back and repeat. So once we've had our sugar all nicely incorporated, we're going to add our egg and continue whisking until our batter is really, really fluffy. Here I have four cups of maseca or our corn flour. And to that, I'm going to be adding a full teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Combine this until you feel it's pretty well incorporated. So if you guys are using a standing mixer like I am at this point, go ahead and change out the whisk for your dough hook. It's going to make things a little less messy once you start adding your maseca into the batter. So again, I don't go just, you know, combining everything. I do it in, I like to do it into three or four parts. Our dough is looking really crumbly and that's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to add 140 milliliters of orange juice. So you're just going to, you know, combine them all in one go. So after incorporating our orange juice, you can tell that the masa, that's what we call the dough in Spanish, um, has become a little bit more mandible. And now I'm going to incorporate two full tablespoons of lemon juice. And for those that speak Spanish and confuse lime and lemon all the time like I do, lemon is the yellow one. So two full tablespoons of um, freshly squeezed lemon juice. So I'm going to turn this on and then we'll be ready to move on to the next. So this is what your consistency should be of your dough or of your masa like I like to call it. It should be smooth and not fluffy anymore. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with a damp cloth and let the dough rest for about 30 minutes. And in the meantime, you can start preheating your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to be layering our coricos on a pre-greased baking sheet, which I've used Crisco and uh, sprinkled some corn flour on. Tip. So whatever countertop you guys are working on, uh, just make sure you sanitize it very, very well and remove any jewelry that you have on. So you're gonna get about a golf ball size and knead it a little bit in your hand because you wanna work some of that air out. And once you feel like it's really, really mandible, kind of like the consistency of Play-Doh, then you're going to start rolling it into log forms and shaping it in two. This is the traditional shape from Sinaloa. Um, or Sinaloenses Coricos. 
and then you're gonna place it onto your cookie sheet. The next shape I'm gonna teach you guys is uh, how to make a caracol, which in Spanish translates to like a shell. And again, just make sure you knead the air out really, really well until you get the consistency of Play-Doh. Roll it out into a log form. Once you feel like it's pretty stable, you're just going to work the dough until you get the shape of a shell. A seashell. I don't know, I just think once these are, are baked, they look really, really pretty. I'll show you guys another fun shape to have the little ones and your little helpers help you with. You know, obviously the little kids, they're not going to have these like ridiculously long nails that I'm kind of upset at my nail lady for <laughs> making them so long and I'm too shy and too nice to say otherwise. But if you have little kids, just have them bunch up their fingers like this and then press it into the dough like so and you're going to get little cat paw prints like a little cat paw print. If not, use a tool and see, it looks like a little kitty paw print. I remember as kids, this, I don't know why we got such a kick out of this shape. Okay guys, but so here are finished coricos. They're straight out of the oven. They just look so, so adorable. These are the caracoles, um, the little cat paw prints I told you guys about. Aren't they cute? And here's the finished uh, roscas that we made. So this is the color that I like them. Um, I like them not too, not too brown and not too pale. This is this is just about right for me and my family's liking. So I baked them at 300 degrees. And the thing is, I can't give you guys an exact same time because depending on the shape and depending on the um, size that you guys make yours will determine the how long they they bake for. But roughly, it's between 40 to 55 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Once you hit the 40 minute mark, you know, start checking on them until you get a nice color that you like and then take them out of the oven. They should be done. And then once you take them out of the oven, let them rest for about 10 minutes and then the Crisco shortening will solidify and then you'll have a really nice solid shape like these guys. And um, I'm gonna enjoy these with my cup of coffee right now and uh, probably be putting some aside for little gifts later. But yeah, I wish you guys happy holidays and let me know if there's any other Mexican Christmas recipes you guys are interested in learning like champurrado or tamales or what have you. But yeah, guys, until then, take care and saludos a todos. Bye-bye.